Away World Raleigh, and I am sitting with Mike McGee and Lauren Knott. Um, Mike is the director of the Raleigh Little Theater's production of Cinderella, which opens at the end of the month, and Lauren is playing Cinderella. <laughs> um, so, Mike, let me start with you. Okay. This is the 35th year of Cinderella, and it's really a time-honored holiday tradition here at Raleigh Little Theater. So what can audiences expect this year, and what's new? Sure, yeah. So it's, it's first of all, it's not the Rodgers and Hammerstein version of Cinderella. <laughs> it's, it's very different. It was uh, kind of developed. It's, it's based on a script by Jim Eiler, and it, but it was kind of developed over the years lovingly. We have... Uh, permission from him to, he's actually unfortunately passed, but we had permission from him to modify the show over the years, so it's changed a lot from its original form every year. Uh, this year we are adding a new prologue, so a new start to the show uh, for our ensemble. They're each going to have a, a solo, which is like the first time we've ever had the ensemble each have, uh, have their own moment in the show as a solo. We are rewriting the King song uh, to be a totally new style of music, and so that's going to be really fun. And then I think we're probably just continuing the narrative of um, what Rod and Nancy Rich started when they started directing the show after Haskell passed, which is to kind of develop the love story a little more between Cinderella and the prince, and also just kind of get away from the woe is me Cinderella and please come rescue me, and a little bit more of a, a woman who's in charge of her own destiny who happens to fall in love during the course of our show. Is that fair? That feels right. That feels good. <laughs> that feels good. Um, and you worked with the show as the stage manager for a few years, as you said, under the two previous directors, Haskell Fitzsimmons and Ron and Nancy Rich. What did you learn working with them about this production that you're kind of, the kinds of informs how you're approaching it? Oh, wow, yeah, that's a great question. So, yeah, I had, um, I had, been involved, I have been. I have not been involved in the show in about four years. I, I stage managed Rod and Nancy's first year after they took over with Haskell, which was, you know, so thankful for all of us to take for that they took over because it was hard to take over from someone who directed the show for 29 years. <laughs> um, I think it's. Um, I think what I try to hold in my heart that I learned a lot from Haskell and from Rod and Nancy um, is just the joy of the show that it brings to people. Sometimes you can get caught up in the fact that the show is a little silly, um, a little over the top at times, but. Um, the moment um, that the audiences come in, and I always tell, I, I think I learned this from Haskell, but um, I always tell my cast, it's always the first time someone's seeing the show and seeing the story. And we have little girls dressed in, uh, in Cinderella costumes. Well, and, any princess and, costume. And, and, <laughs> yeah, princess costumes. Um, and I think from Ron and Nancy I learned, so that was more from Haskell, from Ron and Nancy I, I think I learned that, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be the same way and we can change the story and, and we, can, we have the right to kind of make it our own. And they certainly made it their own over the years. And so um, they certainly, I feel now that I'm directing, it gave me the empowerment to, to not just stick with the old. There's still plenty of old in the show, but, but there's lots of new, so. And Lauren, you're returning to the role of Cinderella. Yes. You did this one, once before? Once, twice? once before. Once I've been in the show, this is my fourth time in the show, <laughs> but I was in the ensemble twice, then Cinderella, then a break, then Cinderella. <laughs> So what did you learn from your first time, your first go around as Cinderella, um, that you're kind of, you know, kind of gave you a little bit of experience, gave you a little bit of insight into how you're approaching this time around? Sure. Um, well, it's funny because it's a almost completely different role than it was <laughs> when I first played it. Um, they had, I took it over uh, Nancy and Rod's second year, and they had already rewritten a lot of her uh, scenes to give her a little more agency. Um, but now I don't think I have any dialogue that is the same as the first time I played it. So it's practically a completely new role for me. <laughs> but I was also like 18 years old and just a tiny sweet child who had no knowledge of the world. <laughs> I had very little like formal training. So um, I guess I want to keep the sort of the innocence and the little bit of naivety that I had when I was that age. But like bring actual knowledge of how to act to the role this time. <laughs> Not that it was bad before. Lots of people enjoyed it. But <laughs> I, I recently got to look back at some of the clips and I was like, I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm here again. A do-over. <laughs> a do-over. I wish I could do that for all my roles. <laughs> um, and in taking this role and kind of diving into Cinderella, I mean, you're talking about this beloved fairy tale figure. Is there anything that you've kind of learned about her that surprised you or interested you or that, that was kind of surprising, I guess? Sure. I think Cinderella for me, like, it's very easy to, to fall into a trap of like, oh, she's 
just a beautiful young girl and she she just she wants a man to come and save her and she wants to fall in love and like that's her goal but in almost any iteration of Cinderella like if you actually look at what she's doing and what her objectives are that that's never anything she states I mean maybe in the original script but we've moved past that <laughs> she's never like excuse me please lord send me a man to save me she's like I want to get out of this terrible situation I'm in. So for me, at her core, Cinderella is a very brave, smart, kind young woman who has been abused by her family, by the only people that she knows. Um, and she finds a way to persevere in spite of that. And I think that's something everyone can take something away from. Absolutely. Um, and this is for both of you. What are some of the challenges in staging a production like this? We talked about kind of the fact that the show bounced around kind of from theater to theater. Um, and not only the challenges, but is there any amount of pressure <laughs> on mounting a production that's become a beloved family tradition for 35 years? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. yes. I mean, we've had a family come every year since the beginning of Cinderella. Mike talks about them frequently. He yeah, says that's the only review he cares about. <laughs> <laughs> so family no about. offense to the reviewers out there. <laughs> uh, they've come, uh, they were up to four generations uh, coming uh, to the show. Uh, unfortunately, great-grandma passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, when I first met them, the fourth generation was, uh, I think, a month old at the mm -hmm. time, and there was four generations. So, um, yeah, uh, certainly there is. I think for me, the hard, well, a couple things. This is my first big musical. I've directed uh, plays before. This is my first big musical, so putting it all together with 27 people um, is definitely more exhausting than I had uh, anticipated. <laughs> I have a great choreographer, Jess Barber, and a great music director, Joe Lee, but uh, it's, still, it's still tiring. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's when I direct a play that I'm doing from scratch, there's a different level of ownership. And so it's sometimes when there's stuff we're keeping, I almost have to get my brain working in the fact that it's not necessarily my blocking, I'm kind of giving what's been out there for a while. And so sometimes it's hard to kind of reverse your thought versus when you just, when you start something from scratch, you just kind of know it. And, and so it's a little bit of a challenge to kind of find that blend of what we're keeping and what's, what we're changing. Because you don't want to change. The purpose of the show for the theater is not to change everything every year because it's meant to be a little bit of a theater out of a box, right? Pop it up. And as you saw, they're loading in the sets right now. And, and every year we add a little bit new to the set. We're getting a new coach this year. And so that'll be very beautiful. So, uh, so yeah, it's that balance of, of really finding the blend between the old and the new. Yeah, and it's been interesting for me, having played the role before, because there are certain things, like there's certain dances or scenes where I'm like, oh, when I did it last, I was stage left, and now you want me stage right? Like, it's, it's been a little confusing for me, but probably good for my brain to have to figure out. It's good to challenge yourself. Yes. <laughs> Um, now, Charles Vanoff tweeted out that one of his favorite things with this show is the post-show meet and greet mm -hmm. after every performance. Yeah. So tell me about that experience and the fans, particularly <laughs> the little kids. Oh, it's the greatest. It's so good. We, we sing, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and then we all go out through the house, we wave as we go by, and we all go post up in the lobby. Um, and, you know, the kids, like, they really think that you're Cinderella. They really think that you are these characters. And it's just, it's some of these kids like first time ever seeing theater and it's maybe letting them discover something that they're going to want to do. Like, oh, I want to learn how to dance. I want to learn how to sing. But they come up to you in their little, their little costumes or their sweet little Christmas dresses and they, they hand you their program. They try and touch your dress and you <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, it's, it's one of the most rewarding things about doing the show is in theater so often you get to like sneak out the back and you don't actually have to see the audience and in this case you're right there and kids won't lie to you kids are not <laughs> gonna tell you you did a good job if you didn't so uh yeah i love it absolutely well and like you said for many kids this is their first theater experience so and and i love that about shows like because I, I want to see the theater live on and I want a new generation to be introduced to the theater. But um, why do you guys think it's important for kids to experience theater and what do you think coming to a production like this with their families gives them, provides for them? <laughs> she thinks. That's a big question. <laughs> it is a big question. Uh, you know, I still, I was telling the cast this just what, a couple nights ago, that I still remember the first show I ever saw, which was Peter Pan with Sandy Duncan on Broadway. My grandparents took me. And that was a long time ago. I'm a little bit older than Lauren, so And my <laughs> first show I ever saw was Peter Pan here oh, in this wow. theater. Which I worked on. 
Uh, I, I think it's so. I mean, we all, we all, all of us that are in theater know the studies of what arts education means to to kids that are able to embrace it and have it. And you know, it's it's a shame that we're cutting funding when we should be um, embracing. We have a number of, uh, especially I think the younger guys in our cast who have never done a staged production of a show, and, and to give them that first opportunity means a lot to me. And I'm I'm hoping that that's something they can embrace. Uh, as they're part of part of their lives, and I didn't get into theater till I was older either, and so um, you know, just being able to either just ignite a love for going to theater, or as Lauren said earlier, uh, finding that they may have a passion of you know acting or singing or dancing that that wasn't there before. But I think we all know that as a community, we're all better off when we have our an enriched arts environment in our lives. Yeah. Your turn. Yeah, no, that's not great. <laughs> that's that's so that's 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 that. <laughs> Do you have anything to add to that? Last show you were in was Spring Awakening, which yes. is not so family friendly. No. But very, <laughs> but very telling for parents. Yeah. And like Absolutely. me, which is one of the things I really liked about it. But, you know, I find when I take my kids to the theater, it's two hours of unplugged time. Mm. And usually it's some sort of springboard for conversation and dialogue, which you don't always get. So. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a lot of theater out there that can be very heavy, that uh, starts those conversations that people need to have. And I love doing that theater. This is not that show, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I think Cinderella is so wonderful because in our world, we have so little, or we have so much sort of like heaviness and so much that we have to think about and that we have to worry about. And it's nice to just have this one like pure little Christmas memory that you can come make with your kids Um, because I know there are kids that come and see it when they're six or seven or eight and they remember it for the rest of their life. I have people I go to college with who have texted me like, are you playing Cinderella this year? I say, yeah. They go, oh my god, I saw that when I was a kid. I gotta come see it again. Like, that's awesome. Like, that's one of my most cherished memories. And like, that's, that's wonderful that people who are 25 are still remembering this, this really special thing that they went to see with their family. So, I just like that we're making memories. It was the first Rod Little Theater show I ever saw with Cinderella. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Um, it really is. <laughs> um, I would be remiss if I didn't say that Cinderella is nominated for a Broadway World Regional Award as the most favorite holiday production. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, yes. oh. Yes. Um, but it was last year, so neither of us were involved in it, it last year, <laughs> but we will still support it. <laughs> and please vote for it. Yes, exactly. It and was last year, so the people can vote now. The Absolutely. voting is open. And remember um, us next year. Exactly. <laughs> and remember. Um, <laughs> So I did want to say that, and I also want to remind audiences that they can see Cinderella opening November 30th. It runs through December 16th right here at Raleigh Little Theater, which is kind of very close to Cameron Village. Mm -hmm. I want to say in the heart of Cameron Village, and tickets are available now. They are going fast, though, so don't wait, especially the aisle seats. They go very fast because that's where the prince comes and tries the uh, slipper on on your foot, so many people buy those up first. And if you're a man who perhaps doesn't want the slipper tried on his foot, maybe give that seat to a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, both of you, and I look forward to seeing the show. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs>